All right, so working on finishing up. You can see the, all the smoothing that takes place. You'll notice little things as you are finishing that can be done a little bit cleaner, a little bit better. I'm working at about a 70% opacity here. I'm doing a lot of stealing colors for myself. hard to know, you can be a, a pretty adventurous with your colors, but it's hard to know the right values sometimes for what we're doing. All right now you can see from my finishes there are certain areas I've just kind of ignored, and that's largely her mouth, the bridge of her nose, these are things I need to still deal with. I have to do it with with subtlety and not so many brush strokes. My computer is beginning to slow down a little bit, so it might be a good time to save. And quit programs I don't need to have open. Save on processing. Almost there with the nose. Good. By working at the lower opacity, I can work between a lot of these colors. And get some nice variations to them. a lot, like I've said before, a lot of back and forth, finding the right balance. And I'm doing it fairly zoomed out so I don't get stuck into little details of brush stroke. Seeing how it looks from a distance there and not zooming in until I'm pretty confident of everything. Right, now the mouth. It's tricky. Smiles are very particular, very unique, because they don't have to do with skeleton structure as much as, as habit and how you've built your muscles over time to move your mouth. So the, sh the outside shape is very important, but also the proportions. When you have lipstick, you have kind of a defined edge and color that you need to observe carefully. You can't just melt it into the skin color as easily as you can when there's not lipstick. Look at the value variations. So the bottom of the upper lip is darker than the top of the upper lip. You can see little flashes of teeth behind. 
you can see pretty dark shadows as well. So I can steal those shadow values from the um, from the eyes. Then where those teeth, those upper teeth rest against the bottom lip, that's a color kind of all its own and a shape that you want to kind of get right. You don't want to draw the teeth, but there so, might be some shadows you need to suggest. But you want to do it very subtly. And no one minds having white teeth, but if the teeth look huge and super white, then they're going to, it's not going to be as flattering as it could be. somewhere with that. Shape the, the shadows around the teeth, more important than the teeth themselves. Another danger area is the gum line. You just want to leave it soft where it needs to be and not too defined. Think of it as kind of an extension of the upper lip in some ways. It's the shape that matters. A little triangle that matters. can shape the outside of the lips with the skin tones. And shape the inside of the lips. To show their shape and their texture. Or with lipstick, their reflective properties. And I'm resisting, even though I'm doing pretty light detailed work, I'm resisting switching to a smaller brush because I know that's just going to make it more detailed than I want it to be, to be in line with everything else. And I'm debating whether to do her pearl necklace or not because that's another, another ad issue. Debating of how um, how much detail to bring into it. I think that's about the right level of detail for the teeth. You can knock it back a little bit more. This lip, let's see. I need to find a skin color I can use. Kind of works with it.
Yeah, there we go. We need that darker tone underneath. And I'm just going to go a little bit more red. Little accents. Too bad. Nope, I think that color is too garish. I can always do a really low opacity pass with the skin tone. Only 8%, very subtle. And that will help knock it back. Bring that a little little bit of that sharpness to his tie as well. next. I think this is still bugging me just a bit how dark that is. Brighten up the part of the shoulder that's catching the light. And now I have to decide if I want to do that necklace or not. Well, let's let's say no for now. Let's work on the uh, the hair. funny because the brightness of the shoulder is kind of working for the composition, but it's just not that bright in the, in the sketch or in the reference. So I'm just going to make it look a little messier like that on purpose. Okay, and now this hair. Just having fun with it. Let's see, now I'm into finishes, so I'm shaping the outside as well. shadow colors behind everything. You can layer them in. I'm not going to draw every piece of hair. I'm just trying to get the, the attitude, the movement. How dark the shadows go in places. At the same time, kind of what effect it should have overall. This is a nice, nice color to use. Just in between there. And this is really just still for my sketch, so I might need to do a layer underneath, 
or just another finished layer on top that's